Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. It is our 11th make of Christmas and today is one that's very special to me. We're going to be remaking our tutorial on our upcycled sweater mittens. This was one of the very first tutorials I ever put out. It's how to turn a old sweater into a pair of mittens. So it's great for one that's worn out or in this case for me, it's one that has special meaning. Um, we obviously have learned a lot since we started doing videos. So we get to do it in our brand new space with all of our new technology and overhead cameras. So it should be a treat for you guys. The first video has hundreds of thousands of views. So I hope you guys enjoy this as much as the original. Um, but so today's, like I said, it has special meaning to me. My grandmother passed away um, in the spring. So this is our first Christmas without her. So when my mom and aunt were cleaning out her things, um, I asked for enough sweaters so that I could make these sweater mittens for all of the women in the family and all the grandkids. So everyone will have something to remember her by. Um, so this is one of her sweaters and I think it's going to make a really lovely, holiday gift that's very meaningful. Um, and I think it's a great way to remember people and, and have a part of her with you um, always. Um, but it doesn't have to be something that means something special to you. You can go get a Goodwill sweater as well and make it for about five bucks uh, per pair between the amount you'd spend on your Goodwill sweater and your fleece. We don't sell the fleece on our website. We used to have it, but it just took a really long time to move. So go ahead and grab that from your local Joann's or wherever. Um, sweater can come from your own wardrobe or go to Goodwill. There's always real fun ones there that you can get. Um, I do recommend that you pre-wash. It does not need to be wool. Acrylic is perfectly fine to do this with. And wool actually will make it much denser and a little bit harder to sew with because when you wash it on hot water, it's going to felt up and get very dense in the fabric. It's going to felt it. Um, but if you live somewhere where it's very cold, that might be something that you want to do. When you're choosing your sweaters, you wanna look for ones that have a ribbed cuff like this because this is going to go over our mitten cuff um, and keep everything nice and secure and tight against your wrist. So you wanna make sure it's got ribbing like this. If it is one that's very floppy and open at the sides, that would not be a good sweater for this uh, project, you'll have to use that for something else. Um, and then of course you can get our upcycled sweater mitten pattern on our website over at shop.quiltedexonomist.com. It's all the templates and the instructions with photos to go along with it. And then you can follow along with this video as well. And this is just, it's been a favorite of people for many, many years. There's a lot you can do. You can have a lot of fun mixing and matching prints to create cool designs and have like fair aisle going all around your mitten top. It's really a fun thing. Or in my case, it's going to be a very sentimental thing that is handed out at the holidays. So let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is separate our sweater. We wanna cut off our sleeves and then also down the sides and at the shoulders. So we have a front, a back and two sleeves to work with. not going to need our sleeves till the very end so I'm just going to set them to the side for now and I'm also going to set my sweater back to the side. Now the instructions will tell you to fold the sweater in half and when you don't have anything special going on on the sweater front that's totally fine to do but what I want to do is I want to center these cabled and designed stitches um, in the center of the mitten so I'm going to cut those separately. All right, so I've got this nice cable going and it's gonna go all the way down the mitten. I think I am gonna arrange the top so that it is right at the base of where one of these is kind of coming together in that design. That way I can line it up nice and easily on the other side as well. It's helpful if you print a couple of copies of the mitten templates. I did not do that in this case, but I am regretting that at this moment. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pin at the top and the bottom and also at the sides just to hold that in place while I cut it out. And just a note, so I can make one pair of these in about an hour. 
and it is very helpful if you kind of do this in assembly line sewing fashion if you have a lot to do. I'm just going to do one on the video today, but when I do the rest of them for the gifts, I'm going to cut out all my sweaters first, then I'm going to cut out all my fleeces second, and then I'm going to sew and pin everything together all at once. I'll stuff everything all at once, and then finally turn everything all at once. So that way, it, it just gets you some efficiencies. You can go a little bit faster that way. All right, so I'm still gonna need this section of the sweater eventually to cut out my second half of the mitten. So I'm gonna come in and cut around from this side. All right, so we've got one mitten back done. And now I'm gonna go ahead and line it up as well at, for this one, try and line this up as much as I can. And I kind of started at the base where one of these was coming together, trying to line it up as best I can. Actually, I think what I'll do is this. There you go, that worked out pretty good. So I'm just gonna actually pin this one right on top. That way I know that my patterns are going to be the same. And so the mittens will look the same. It'll look like it was actually knitted, but we'll know it's sewn. All right, we are now done with the sweater front. So we've got our two backs, we're good to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that with my template and we'll need that in a little bit when we're sewing everything together. Now for this section, you are gonna to wanna to make sure that you are folding it together because you need to make sure that you have a mitten front and a mitten back that are both for your right and your left hands. It doesn't matter with the back because it's the same either way, but you have thumbs on opposite sides of your fingers. So when you lay it across like that, then you're able to cut it in going one direction and you will have thumbs in the right spot. Same deal for your lower front and your upper front. And I like to just lay one of them upside down like this. That way I can be a little bit more economical. Um, I'm not worrying about where the sweater is so much for this. Now, one thing that you wanna pay attention to here, um, if you are a knitter, this will be easy. You wanna make sure that when you are working with this that you're identifying what is the front side of it and what is the back side. The front side usually is going to have all the little Vs in it and the back side is going to be bumpy. That's the pearl side. So make sure that you are trying your best to make sure that you're identifying the right and the wrong side of the knit. And if it gets messed up, usually it's fine and you don't have to worry about it. All right, so now I'm just gonna cut around these as well. All right, so now when I take these apart and I go ahead and flip them so that the right side of the knit is up, I've got two thumbs going in opposite directions, which is exactly what we want to have happen. We did it right. So then I can lay it right sides together with my lowers. And if they don't fit together perfectly right, this is not an heirloom sewing project, even though sometimes they have special meaning like this does for me. Um, it is definitely okay, like this one is a little bit wider than this one, no big deal, we're gonna be able to make that work. I'm just gonna go ahead and pin these together now um, before I start on my rest of my sewing since I've got them in place. What I like to do is pin in the corner of that thumb and then I will pin, I'll probably just trim off the side there some, and I'm just gonna pin in the corner and then we'll hit the top of the thumb 
as well. And then your pattern pieces, they have these little dots on them. It's basically where you're supposed to stop sewing. So if you kind of lean it to the side, we can, or scooch it to the side, you keep it even with the top and then you know you're supposed to stop sewing at that dot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a pin in right here and that'll tell me that eventually I need to sew all the way around and out. And then same deal on the other one. I'm gonna wanna sew all the way around and out. So I'll line it up. This time I, uh, I'm gonna have to look from the bottom and see where we're at. You can always like draw your line through too so it's easier to see. But usually that's one of my first places that I pin so I know where my start and stop is. So that way we don't stitch something in and have problems later. If you wanted to also pin at sort of the tips of the thumbs over there, that would be perfectly fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and stack this to the side and we're gonna get our fleece cut next. So like any fabric, fleece has a stretchy side and a not so stretchy side. Usually the stretchy part is across the width of the fabric here. So here we can see that's got some good stretch. When I go for that crosswise, we don't have that as much. Now we want the stretch to be going across our hand. So when I line this up, I'm going to line them up so that way my pieces are going to be cut like this. And that way we can just really nicely just scooch through. And if you're gonna be like me and you're gonna be doing a lot of these, you're gonna to wanna to be economical with your placement of these. So this is a really good way to do it. That way we can have our back, our upper face down and our lower. We're still gonna have everything going the right way when we're done, but that way we can make the most of our fabric instead of having a whole lot of Swiss cheese. And again, I'm really regretting not having more templates because if I were doing this in assembly line style, I would go all the way down one width of fabric cutting these out and then I would do another until I had enough pieces. I do not recommend wearing an actual sweater to do this. I'm getting fuzzes all over myself at the moment. You don't have to worry about right and wrong sides so much when it comes to these, but you do wanna make sure that you've got you know, thumbs going in opposite directions. That is always important. This is your quality check time to make sure that your thumbs are not flipped. So we don't want them to look like that. We want them both to be going in opposite directions. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this and we're ready to start sewing. All right, so I wrote this pattern to go with a quarter inch seam. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set your sewing machine up to that. That's because I'm a quilter and I'm very comfortable with a quarter inch seam and I bet a lot of you guys are too. All right, I've got my stack ready to go here. Again, we're gonna stitch around and stop at our pin. And then when we have our other side, we're actually gonna start at the pin and stop over there. So pretty easy peasy, just take it slow on those curves. And I do back stitch a little bit when I'm getting started. All right, so when I'm turning that thumb, I'm gonna sew in about a quarter inch until I can turn it and have the rest of the thumb even with the edge of my presser foot, then I'm ready to go. I find that this thumb just always kind of wants to turn on me without too much effort, but you may need to lift in that presser foot up a little bit as you're working your way around. All right, I've hit where that pin is. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and backstitch a little bit. And you can see here that the edges have definitely frayed some, but mostly what you wanna do is check and make sure that you've caught all your edges I have here. This is all going to be enclosed within the mitten, so we don't have to worry about surging that or anything. All right, now I'm just gonna sew around all the others. And you can, you know, switch out your thread and match your mittens. I've almost always used white for everything, including really dark mittens and red mittens like this one. I've never had an issue, so it's up to you. All right, now it's time to grab our backs and we are going to pin our pieces together. And again, this is a really good quality check time. You wanna make sure you've got a right and a left and your thumbs are going in opposite directions. 
Uh, so let's see, we should be good here because I've done quality checks along the way. And I do, when I have my right sides together, I've got thumbs on opposite sides. So that's exactly what we want to have happen. I'm gonna show you how to pin on the one that is from the sweater. And then it's the same process for the other as well. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to pin your base first. This is the part that's gonna go around your wrist. And so we're gonna get those together. And it is not uncommon for this to be a little wonky at this point. We are dealing with a sweater knit, which has a mind of its own. So don't worry if you kind of have to give things a little bit of a stretch to make it work and make it fit. All right, now I'm gonna pin at the top. And I also like to pin at the sides, kind of where the ring finger and the pointer finger are going to be. All right, now if you are matching stripes of any kind, you're gonna make sure that you are doing that all the way down. So that way it looks like the stripe goes continuously all around the hand. I don't have to do that for this one. but So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin so that the seam is going toward the finger edge. So I'm gonna pin that down. And I'm gonna do the same on this side, but the thumb is a little different. I wanna pin it so that it is going out of the way. That way I don't accidentally sew the thumb into the seam because that would be no fun. Now, this is a lot of room for things to move around on me. So I am gonna go ahead and throw a couple more pins in on the sides, just to keep everything nice and stable as I go along. Again. You don't have to do this. You certainly should if you are matching up a bunch of stripes um, so that it looks, you know, just all that more professional and beautiful. But um, for this part, I just want the stability because this part of the knit that's going to be on my hand is a lot less dense than the uh, work that is on this part. So I just want to make sure that everything stays put and doesn't get all stretched funny as I go around. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing for the other half and the linings and then we are good to sew. I'm gonna be sappy for just a second. So these mittens have been, they were not washed since they were in her wardrobe, my grandma's wardrobe. And then they sat in her uh, hope chest, which I have now um, that she got when she got married to my grandpa 70 years ago. And they smell like her house and her. And so it's a little like, it's so strange how like a smell can just bring back so much for you. So if you guys are doing this and it's for something sentimental like this, like it's going to be a, a pleasurable, pleasant experience to work on it um, and kind of help remind you of a person that, that you're trying to celebrate by doing this. All right, now we are just gonna stitch all the way around the outside of the mitten. Obviously we wanna leave the bottom open so we can get our hand through. And I do back stitch at the start and the stop. go kind of slow when you're going around that thumb because you want to make sure that you're catching it and you also want to make sure that it's out of the way so you both have to seal in that seam and make sure that thumb is nice and free This is maybe my favorite part of the process because it's when it really starts to look like a mitten. So we're gonna take our piece that is going to be on the outside, the sweater part, and we're gonna turn it right side out. I find it easiest to just kind of put it on your hand to do that. Make sure you're pushing that thumb out as well. And you wanna to wanna to use your fingers to kind of push that seam out as much as you can. And then you're going to take the glove, so that was my left-handed glove, um, and we're gonna do our lining. This is gonna stay with the wrong side out because it's going to be meeting the wrong sides here and have the finished side facing your hand, if that makes sense. It will when you're actually doing it. 
And now we get to kind of mess with it a little bit to fill it out, get those seams to kind of match and be on each other. And now we have something that is looking really, really cute and pretty. And so I'm gonna put that to the side for a second and do the same thing with the other hand. All right, so this is looking really good, really cute. Uh, it is our last time for a quality check, making sure we have thumbs on opposite sides. We do, that's good. Now I have my quilting pins handy here. It is best to do this with pins that have a ball on the top uh, because it's, it's just a little less cumbersome when you're going around. But what I like to do is turn my seams so that they're going in opposite directions to have a little bit less bulk as you're going around. And I'm just gonna pin first at the seams, and I like to turn them going the same way. So this one was going down for the sweater. So I'm gonna have that also going down toward that bottom of the hand, the thumb side, and do the same thing, pin over here. Then what I like to do is pin halfway through the middle. And I'm gonna push these pins all the way down as far as I can, so that way they kind of don't get caught as I'm going around to do the basing stitch next. I'm gonna do the same thing also getting the quarters. And sometimes you end up with a knit, this one's very dense on this side, it's holding the shape really well. That is not necessarily the case over here. Um, so you might have it be a little stretchier and you may have to ease in a little bit of it and that's okay. It's a knit, it is not quilting fabric. It is perfectly fine to do that and it will look beautiful in the end. All right, so now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're just gonna stitch a basing stitch just to make sure that our lining and our outside fabric are nice and joined before we add the cuff. That way you're less likely to have some bit poking out when we're all done, but we are in the home stretch. We are almost done with these mittens. All right, so I've got the edge of my presser foot lined up with the edge of that lining and we're just gonna stitch around. If you wanna increase your stitch length at this point, that's perfectly fine. And you just wanna go slow. Try and keep those other pins out of the way as these are going up and down. They kinda of wanna slide out on you and make trouble. Also, just a tip, I almost always start on the wrist side, the bottom, because that way, if I mess something up, you're less likely to see it. All right, our mittens are almost done, but they need a cuff. So let's get their sleeves back out. And I found that four to five inches is a great length for a cuff. So I actually like to err on the side of five, but if you have a sleeve that's getting very, very wide, you might wanna err on the side of four. So what I'm doing is I'm just lining my quilting ruler up with the tip of the sleeve. And I'm just gonna cut one at a time. I'm just gonna cut straight across here. An eyeball at this point. And then just keeping that on top and lined up at the edges, I'm gonna put the second one in. Now this next part seems weird, but I promise you it works when it's all flipped around. We're going to just leave it with the right side out and then we're gonna slide it in. And I like to put it so that the seam edge of the sleeve is on the same side that the thumb is going to be on. That's personal preference. Uh, you can certainly do whatever you want here. But once I've got that nice and in line, and this is going to be a very bulky seam at this point, I'm gonna pin that in place. And then I can really clearly see my fold. So I'm going to take and I'm going to pin that at the other side seam. Now this is where you might have a significant amount of easing in to do because you can see that this gets larger as it goes out. So depending on how your sleeve is shaped, you might need to do some finagling at this point, but it's knit, it is easy to work with um, when you do it that way. So I'm just, again, gonna pin at my halfway point and then again at my quarters, just to keep everything nice and in aligned all the way around. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. But if you kind of just kind of flush it out there. I've got a little bit more easing in to do on this side. And because this is that thicker side that didn't have as much stretch. So I've just kind of got it to where it looks nice and flat. 
and I'm going to put my pins in again, center, and then at the quarters, and then I'm ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other mitten, stitch around, then we get to turn our cuff and be done. It's a very fast, uh, satisfying project because you really can do it very quickly and then wear it out that afternoon. So for this section, I often will move my sewing machine stitch so that I'm sewing a 3 8 of an inch seam. That way I'm not gonna see that stitch that I did beforehand. I don't know that it says that in the pattern, but uh, it's usually my practice to do that and just go a little bit deeper in. All right, here is when it's all done, you're gonna unfold that cuff and put it around. And you can mess with it at this point to decide how much you want to go over um, and go over the side there. And it's just really pretty, really fun. Uh, this keeps your wrist nice and warm. I live in the Midwest, it gets pretty cold and the combination of the sweater and the fleece is always really nice. And that way you can just stay nice and toasty and not have to worry about getting cold. I can drive in these, no problem. And they just look really nice and really fun. And in this case, they've got a really special meaning as well. Um, I did the five inches here, so that is coming all the way up to the cuff. But if you think about it, like when you've got your coat on, it, it'll pull down some as you, as you wear it. Um, you can always put like a decorative button on the outside, sometimes you get sleeves that already have little decorative buttons on them, and then it's just really a pretty thing to have on. Um, but it's just really, it's fun to do. I made mediums today. I have small hands, and they fit me really well. Mediums fit most women. Um, smalls are good for like older kids and teens, and then the larges work for most men. So there's three sizes in the pattern. Um, you're pretty safe to just make a medium and these are really fun, really pretty, and yeah, to me, they have a really special meaning. So if you are gonna do this like I am, where I've got a whole bunch more to make, because I've got a pile of my grandma's sweaters um, that I'm gonna turn these into for the women in the family, um, what I would recommend doing is cutting all your sweaters first and then cutting all of your fleece, then doing all of your sewing of your um, thumb parts together, then pin everything, and sew it together. Then you're gonna baste everything all at one side, and then you're gonna add all the cuffs all at one time. And you'll be able to really create some fun, some fun cute quilt little, or it's not a quilt, some fun little uh, mittens for you that maybe it's a sweater that you don't, doesn't fit anymore, or it's worn out, or it's got a hole in something. You can always reuse this and create some really beautiful patterns. And I mean, just look at the patterning of this knit on here. It's so fun. It's so beautiful. Um, and it used to be a sweater. And now it's going to have a new life as mittens. So check it out. The pattern is called Upcycled Sweater Mittens. You can get it on our website, shop.quiltedexonomist.com. Go raid your sweater or head to Goodwill to get some good ones. It doesn't have to be wool. Um, also, if you wanted to, you could serge around this edge before you turn the cuff. I have never done that. Um, and I've thrown these through the wash and not had any issues. Um, but if you wanted to take that extra measure, you could. The inside is fully lined. There's no raw edges on there. So you really don't have to worry too much about anything coming undone. Um, and I've used these for many, many winters and um, in other pairs that I've made and my kids who you know kids are rough on stuff and they have worked just fine for them as well. So enjoy, uh, go make some for you, stay cozy this winter and you can make a whole bunch of these up for gifts. I've got about eight to do, I'll be able to do it in a, in a Saturday. Um, so that'll be great. And then we've, we've got that, that done, that is off of my to-do list. All right. Well, I hope you enjoy 12 Makes of Christmas. We've got one more video for you tomorrow and make sure you catch up on all the other makes that we have come up with so you guys can have some good ideas of things that you can make for this holiday season. Make sure you're also liked and subscribed on our YouTube channel so that you can see all the video tutorials that we bring you throughout the year. And again, I'm Stephanie Seming and happy quilting. Cool